Try to one of Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Greg Bolden. I'm the Community Initiatives Program Manager for the Center for Black Health and Equity. Today, we are going to focus on victory with our digital uh, event. Today, we have some dynamic speakers and we have some great information to share with you about what you can do for No Menthol Sunday. So if you have any idea, then you can look at it today as far as some different ideas. Okay. So No Menthol Sunday, this is our this is our 10th, no, our ninth year, I'm sorry. This is our ninth year. And why is my video not working? There we go. There you go. This is our ninth year. Uh, this year, we're going to focus on victory, the go against the grain. And you'll, you'll learn some outstanding ideas and thoughts in what you can do for No Menthol Sunday. Uh, this year, our faith community, our, our uh, the communities, our retailers, our communities that have addressed policy are going to be sharing information with you today. But before we get started, I'd like to invite our executive director, Mr. Delmonte Jefferson, to come in and welcome everyone to the Focus on Victory digital event. Thank you so much, Greg. And thank you, everyone that is here joining us today for this momentous occasion. I say it's momentous because this is our ninth year doing uh, No Menthol Sunday, of course. Uh, that means that next year is going to be really, really, really big. If you think that this is big, next year is going to be really, really big as we're celebrating 10 years of doing this event. I want to thank Carol, who's also here with us today, because Carol was with us when the whole idea came to do No Menthol Sunday. It came from a a group of pastors. We had a faith-based conference and some pastors were there and we were talking to pastors about menthol and we said, what can we do? And the pastors, the pastors that were at the conference said, well, we can all speak out together from the pulpit about the harms of tobacco on the same day. And, uh, and that's how No Menthol Sunday was formed um, nine years ago. And so we wanna thank you all for being a part of this one. This is our way of, of celebrating um, of celebrating, of course, our advocacy work to eliminate the harms of mentholated tobacco products, but also to get folks to abstain from tobacco use, these two primary purposes of, of No Menthol Sunday. So we've got some dynamic speakers. We're going to hear some dynamic activities that you can do to engage in No Menthol Sunday. And so thank you for being a part of it. And I'm going to let it go and pass it back to you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. This year, we have some I, I, iconic information that you can actually download and share with your friends. You can print it out. And we have some materials that you can uh, utilize. Our toolkit is our primary tool that we use to reach out to our communities. It has an, a, a great a, a great products for informa informational products that you can use that you don't even have to think about it. You can just go through the toolkit and just utilize those things. But today, before we get started, I've, we've now got some media video uh, audio that you can actually share and you can use within your congregations. Let me just get this in. Smoking. Yeah, we know it's bad. But what about vape pens and hookahs? Yeah, that is smoking as well. In fact, hookahs can be worse. Did you know that a one hour hookah session can be equivalent to smoking 200 cigarettes? <laughs> wow. Like menthols, the flavor additives makes them easier to smoke and harder to quit. May 21st is no menthol Sunday. Focus on victory, the victory of truly being tobacco free. Visit nomenthalsunday.org for tools to become tobacco free. And I have to admit, I'm trying really hard not to take away some of the thunder from some of our speakers because they're doing outstanding stuff. And I just want to make sure that I don't take away their thunder. But this is information. It actually shows the cover of our toolkit. It actually shows the fans that we're going to be utilizing this year, as well as some digital material that you can download and place on your social media uh, platforms using the hashtag NMS 2023. So 
we'd like to introduce the folks who are going to be speaking today. You just heard from our executive director, Delmani Jefferson, but also here we have Minu Jones, who is the executive director of Making It Count uh, Development Corporation out of Detroit, Michigan. She's also the chair of the Detroit Wayne Oakland Tobacco Free Coalition, which is doing outstanding work in Detroit. We have Ms. Lorraine Latham, who is a, the president of Jump at the Sun, who has been one of our primary partners for years out of Wisconsin and doing actually excellent work. And you just heard Delmonte talk about Carol Magruder with the African-American Tobacco Control Leadership Council, who was here from the very beginning. And in California, they're doing outstanding work. And you're going to be excited to hear about some of the things that they're going to be doing. And last but not least, we have Mr. Lincoln Mundy. If you guys are familiar with Black Lives, Black Lungs, then he is the author of that video and that that and putting all of that together. And now he has this second iteration of Black Lives, Black Lungs, Journey of the Fallen of a Fallen Leaf, of a Stolen Leaf, excuse me. And we're going to be showing that video today and actually having a discussion. You'll have an opportunity to ask him questions about how you can implement this in your local communities. And you can actually have uh, questions for our panelists, our other panelists, about what they're doing and how they got started and, and what they did to get folks involved in their local community. But before we get there, I really am excited about these new media uh, platforms. Black Health Now. When's the last time you smoked a cigarette? What about the last time you used a vape pen, e-cigarette, or hookah? Regardless of which device you use, they're all terrible for your health. And shockingly, hookahs and e-cigarettes are far worse than traditional tobacco cigarettes. While the device choice is different between generations, smoking menthol and tobacco products will yield the same results, as this can lead to lung complications like cancer, COPD, and more. To protect your health and future, it's best to eliminate their use altogether. May 21st is No Menthol Sunday, so visit www.nomenthalsunday.org to learn about how you and your faith community can focus on the victory of being tobacco and nicotine free. With Black Health Now, this is Zoe. Black Health Now. And you too can actually, as soon as we get uploaded, you'll be able to download those those uh, announcements, those video announcements, audio announcements, utilize them in your church, on your local radio stations, share them with your friends, put them out on your website, and just share them with folks who you think might be interested in participating in No Menthol Sunday, but also, more importantly, may want to give up uh, tobacco use completely, especially around menthol, because that's one of our primary objectives. At this time, I'd like to call on Ms. Minu Jones, and I'm going to stop sharing and so that she can share her video and her information with you. And she'll have five to seven minutes to actually do that. Minu, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Just give me share access. Okay, I stop sharing. Okay, um, let me see. Of course, I don't have the screen that I need to be up. Um. Okay, so I am going to talk and then share a video. So um, let me see, share sound. I know I need to do that. Okay. Can uh, everybody see my Willie Menthol Wilson screen? Yes. 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 Okay. So I'm Minu Jones. Thank you for having me. I know that I'm in great company um, and I'm just so happy to be part of uh, the speakers today um, who I, I actually love and idol. Um, in Detroit, Michigan, you know, we've been doing amazing work um, on ending the sale of menthol and all flavored tobacco products by mobilizing our community. This year, we will have 20 organizations who uh, will actually be showing our uh, video that we created um, Willie Menthol Wilson. This um, video is available for you to use as well. Um, I'm going to just show the trailer to it. Um, it's a 17 minute video in its entirety, and it comes with the community discussion guide. 
Um, we have 20 churches and organizations that will par be participating in that. And then on May 17th, so right before um, No Menthol Sunday, we have um, the CDC tips campaign. Jerry, who is um, a tips campaign um, advocate, is from Detroit. And she will be here as part of the tips campaign to do um, their tour and a press conference with us on March 17th at Wayne State University. And then um, one of our coalition members is the Center for Urban Youth and Development at Hartford Memorial Church. They're going to be doing um, morning uh, service activities. We'll be using those uh, sound bites that were just uh, provided. And we've partnered with Wayne State University, who has a mobile health unit. So we'll have a mobile health unit on site on May 21st at Hartford Memorial to uh, support the congregation with on-site cessation resources um, to, to help them along their quit journey. So this is uh, the clip of our uh, Willie Menthol Wilson video. I have shared the sound. Let's pray that it works. Willie Menthol Wilson. Hey, G Army. I know you guys have been wondering why I haven't been so actively wondering what's going on. I'm in big change in my life recently. Yeah, I, I recently quit smoking. consider quitting here's your sign so this video is really geared towards uh, youth audiences it's been the full video in its entirety really focuses on educating um, youth audiences about the dangers of vaping uh, nicotine addiction um, in how they as youth can be supportive in advocacy and really moving us towards uh, banning vapes and all flavored tobacco products. Again, it comes with a community discussion guide um, really to prompt conversation and discussion around this issue and how it's impacted um, the African-American community in particular. The character that you that you just saw, there were two characters that you saw, Willie Menthol Wilson, which is a fictitious character that represents the tobacco company, um, and then uh, Stacy G, who is an influencer who uh, recently quit smoking, um, but, you know, has been dealing with... Um, some of the um the the withdrawal symptoms of addiction and then there are other characters who support her along her journey um to stay tobacco free um as well as advocate so again that video is available for use along with the community discussion guide we're so excited about no menthol sunday activities um in detroit um, and we'll be having everyone wear T-shirts. Uh, we've ordered our fans and uh, we are just excited to continue in this work. So thank you. Thank you, Minu. And if anyone has any questions, we're gonna have a question and answer session at the very end. Please put your questions in the Q&A uh, section or you can actually send us a, a chat uh, and we'll answer the questions from there. So either one of those uh, venues, you can actually put your questions in there and we'll be answering those questions at the very end. Uh, I'd like to now call on Ms. Lorraine Latham out of Wisconsin, who is actually responsible for our yard signs and the coloring <laughs> books and so many of our materials that we have available that you can download and print out uh, at the uh, No Menthol Sunday website. And also she'll probably give you access to her website as well, where you can actually get additional materials. Lorraine, I'd like to turn it over to you at this point. Thank you. Let me pull up my screen as well. 
Whoops. I just did something really strange. Hold on. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay, so again, my name's Lorraine and um, I administer the Wisconsin African American Tobacco Prevention Network and the Poverty Network for the state of Wisconsin. We have been involved in No Menthol Sunday since the beginning, since 2016, um, supporting our pastors, our faith um, community and our youth to raise awareness on this issue. Um, once COVID hit, we started offering our annual kickoff meetings one month prior to No Mythol Sunday. We've had our uh, Lieutenant Governor and other elected officials, uh, national experts such as you that are on the line today, um, participate in No Mythol Sunday. This year, in the, the kickoff this year, we had the um, County Executive from Milwaukee County. Um, we've expanded um, No Mythol Sunday to include the Native American and Muslim communities as well. Um, we use a lot of artists. So we use spoken word artists. They develop poetry that's converted into uh, 30 and 60 second PSAs, which you can use. We use them as radio spots. And we also use them um, for uh, Sunday school Bible study. Um, there's a QR code that allows you to download the poetry. During the classes, they'll they'll listen to the poetry, and then people will also develop their own spoken word um, as well. And we have our coloring book parties with our famous coloring books for both youth and adults and kids. Um, we have our spoken word artists that attend those coloring book parties as well. Um, and again, those are it's nice opportunity to do that. For us, No Menthol Sunday is a whole week. It's the week leading up to the 21st. So Bible study, Sunday school class. Um, we do a lot of media. And Greg, I can't wait to get those um, audios that you played earlier today because we will be uh, using them here in Wisconsin. Um, but we do print radio and television. We have our pastors on the radio. We have our creatives. So we have our spoken word artists, our illustrator for the coloring book. Anybody who's doing anything um, is on the radio the whole week leading up. Um, we're really excited this year. We have the National, I want to say the National Coalition of Negro Women. They are going to be hosting a screening of um, Lincoln's uh, video, Black Lives, Black Lungs, um, the stolen, uh, yeah, Black Lives, Black Lungs, the story of a stolen leaf. <laughs> Almost. Uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, see, I was struggling there. This gives you kind of our reach. We're on the gospel stations. A lot of our pastors have their own radio programs, so they just have us have guests come on to their programs. Um, this is big for us, our retailers. We support them. They have stayed with us since the pandemic. Um, these are retailers that agree not to sell menthols on No Menthol Sunday. So we provide them with the signage that they put up in their um, stores to let their customers know that on this day, you will not be able to purchase menthols. Uh, recently, we developed palm cards for them because they said they wanted to be able to give something to someone that tells them how harmful tobacco is and how they can get um, help to quit. So we also provide palm cards. Um, clearly, we use everything in the National Toolkit. We promote the National Toolkit. And then finally, we do 10 days at a glance. So this gives them, and I'm going to add um, Willie Menthol Wilson, that video. We want to add that to our 10 days as well. You can see that Lincoln's video is on here. So we give them, these are some of the things that you can do leading up to No Menthol Sunday. Um, we've gotten a lot of new uh people that are being involved in No Menthol Sunday this year, coming up with very creative things. We have one group that's doing a mural of life without tobacco. So they're doing a mural in the community. We have a, a youth acting group that's gonna be performing. Um, so we're really excited to be a part of this and can't wait until next year, the 10 year anniversary. So oh, I'm sorry, and these are just finally some of the tools that we have available. Um, Greg mentioned the lawn signs, t-shirts, coloring books, palm cards, 
all of that you can download on our site. Our graphics person is actually on the line as well. But it's the same. It's no menthol Sunday wi.com. So no menthol Sunday wi.com. You can uh, uh, download everything from our site as well. And if you want the t shirt design, just let us know and we'll send the graphics for that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm just so pleased to be part of this. This is amazing work that we're all doing. So thank you. Thank you, Laura. Turn off my video. Thank you, Lorraine. We really appreciate everything that you're doing. And last, well, not even last, uh, Lincoln, you're going to be last, but <laughs> Carol Magruder, our world traveler, uh, she keeps us in line and helps us uh, a lot with our marketing and with our uh, engagement with the press. She, she's just an expert and a lovely person to be uh, associated with. She is our resident expert, so to speak, out there in the community. And now I'd like to turn it over to Carol and have her come on online and share with us. Good morning. Can you hear me and see me? Yes, we can. All righty. So I'm honored to follow behind Ms. Manu Jones and L Lorraine Latham. And uh, what we do in California is we follow, we, we do what Lorraine does. So she's so well organized. So we're always able to see what they got going on in Wisconsin and we, we adjust accordingly. So I just appreciate both my strong sisters and everybody on this call is really family. So I will share my screen. I have a few slides um, and we just got back um, from London where we uh, attended the, um, or we had tried to attend the British American Tobacco Shareholders Meeting there where we were denied. So you'll hear more about that, but Manu was with a, a delegation of ATCL SID folks. So well, that's gonna become an annual event as well. So can folks see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm proud um, that we were there in the beginning and we've been growing and growing and growing this. So next year is our 10 year anniversary. We're gonna start with a go big or go home. So California, uh, we have uh, tobacco tax money. So we have a little bit more resources than a lot of other states do. Um, and we're kind of ahead on the curve and, and that we just passed um, a state law that was put on the ballot as a referendum and upheld. So in California, technically uh, the mentholated tobacco products have been taken off the shelves here, which was a very, very heavy lift. So we wanna uh, focus on victory. We wanna go against the grain this year. And this is a, it's a moving target that has all the money and all the resources in the world. And so we have to uh, utilize all of our resources. And so this is the African-American Tobacco Control Leadership Council. Uh, I'm very proud to be one of the co-chairs along with Dr. Phil Gardner. Uh, we were formed in 2008 and in 2009 was when the Tobacco Control Act was signed that left menthol on the market when all of the other flavors were taken off. So we've been fighting and duking it out ever since with many, many different entities and are so glad to have our new people on the call who might be doing this for the first time or folks who are coming back again just to get re-energized and to see what's new. And I want to just give a shout out. I appreciate the center so much because they really put the package together for us. Uh, we sometimes tailor some of the information for California because we're such a big state, but it's so complete and, and everything that you need is in there. So we uh, kicked off our events. We did a press advisory and uh, from watching uh, one of Lorraine's kickoff webinars a couple of years ago, we begin to include our elected officials, which we hadn't really thought to do. Uh, we also have um, a police chief from San Francisco who sent a video for our No Menthol, our Menthol conference that we held. So to fight against the, uh, the tobacco industry rhetoric about that this will make more police involvement and, and, and more interactions with black people, it's good also to include our law enforcement and to educate them about equitable enforcement of these policies that we're trying to get implemented across the country. So this was our press advisory. And then we have two arms out here in California. We have the fighting arm, which is our policy arm. And then we have amplify.love, which is our loving and supportive arm of really um, elevating our people, of showing a healthier way of, of more comprehensive broadly. We don't just deal with tobacco, but all of the things that are affecting our communities. So we have our kickoff event 
on May 4th, which is next week. You're all invited to attend. Uh, we will be giving away uh, $400 to four churches. We're going to do like the online church raffle. Winner must be present. And this is for California churches. But since we have folks on the call, we'll make a little space and maybe have one or two folks who are outside the state that will not be funded through California funds just to make it interesting. And that's to help our churches to do what they need to do after we give the, the, them the information. And the beauty about this is that you can just take it and do as much or as little as you want. And what, we'll, what we find is that once we get churches with, with that initial year, then each year it grows and people begin to do it on their own, independent of us, which is the point of this. Um, and so it's just so wonderful. So our kickoff event is, is next um, May 4th. Our website is savingblacklives.org. So you can go on there to get more information and to sign up for it, you must register. Um, and so I just wanna spend a little bit of a time talking about the California law. So this was the law that was passed in 2020. And this, I do this because this, you, we lead the way. So we get the, the licks and the knocks ahead of everybody else. And you all can prepare for that because it is coming your way when you have success. So when you win, it's not the end, it's the beginning. So we have this law that we really fought very hard for. The tobacco industry collected signatures. They put it on the ballot. So we had to fight for that. And that was voted in by California voters last November. Um, and, 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 this, and the products began coming off the shelves. And so what did the industry do? But they have new products that are non-menthol, menthol products. And so this is coming to a city and town near you because they're testing these products out. So this was Camel non-menthol, California, we've got you covered. And that's a, a, a play on our Obama healthcare is California covered. So they're gonna cover our people with more, instead of health insurance and wellness, they're covering them with addiction and death and, and just kind of right in your face. Um, this is a non-menthol for cools, um, this advertising reminiscent of the advertising of the 70s um, when they really got their hook into our communities, the 60s and the 70s. Um, and this is cool. So this is the still, still bold, still smooth ad. And I added in still killing black folks. So we wanna take their media, we wanna take their advertising and we wanna flip it. Um, so this is, this is our answer to this ad. And so that pushback, then we have to go and play whack-a-mole because we're running here and running there, responding to them. And so one of the beautiful things about No Menthol Sunday is that it really involves our communities, um, our churches with civil rights. You know, we wouldn't be here where we are today without our spiritual and religious institutions. And so we want to get them involved. And we want them to be a part of the solution. So as we move forward, we also must look at cessation and supportive services to embrace our smokers. This is our amplify.love website. And on that website, we have gotten in more into cessation. And when we're pushing policy, we're pushing cessation, stop smoking services that are comprehensive, that address the social and political determinants of health. Um, it's not just about telling somebody, oh, what's your trigger for smoking? There's a lot more to it for our people. So on our Amplify.love website under Dr. Karen Beard, the leadership of Dr. Karen Beard, we're really expanding and increasing uh, that conversation about also getting funding for cessation services, along with any policy that's implemented that's taking these products off the market. Um, so this is last year's slogan, a fight to the finish. And we are in a fight to the finish as this fight morphs. Uh, we must be nimble. We must in, in, embrace our smokers and have them be a part of this. Even if they're actively smoking, they can still be a part of this fight. Um, and so, and that's my piece. So I'm Carol Magruder. Uh, thank you very much. And I just want to say how grateful I am for the Center for Black Health and Equity. Um, I'm looking as we talk about health equity reparations in this country, I'm looking for the center to get some big money that endows us to do this work broadly in this country. Um, and to do to reverse uh, the harm that has been caused our community all these years by neglect and willful manipulation and racist and persistent targeting. So I turn it back to you, Greg. Wow. As you can see, there's a lot going on in our communities, exciting stuff, and you can do it too. And we understand that you may not be able to do all the things that you've heard today, but what we'd like for you to do is to start. Just light the, the candle, light the match, uh, to or light a candle 
to get stuff started in your community. And like Carol said, once you get folks involved, they kind of come back year after year and, and, and engage. But the one thing that I heard that's important for everyone to understand, we well, while we brand No Menthol Sunday, we make every day Sunday. Like Lorraine said, theirs is for a week. We can make it a month. It's okay. Uh, we just brand No Menthol Sunday. We encourage folks to get involved and we encourage you to make it your own. You know your community better than we do, but we want you to make it your own. And uh, I was just biding time, let Lincoln get ready because he's gonna show the video, Journey of a Stolen Leaf. And uh, what we'd like to do is after he completes it, we'd like to have a conversation. So ask questions, prepare your questions, put them in the chat and we'll actually have a conversation after he shows the video. Okay, Lincoln, it's on you. Thank you, Greg, and the center for having me. I'm also really excited about this conversation. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces, and it's exciting that we get to be in community, especially to celebrate all of the work that you all have done, but also get ready for what's to come. Um, a little bit about me before we get into the film. I'm just going to share briefly sort of how we got here for those who, for those of you who don't know and introduce myself. Uh, my name is Lincoln. I use he and pronouns. I'm based in DC for the past 10 years by way of a small town in Texas. And truly my work has really focused on designing campaigns and video series and strategies focused on the health and well-being of young people. Uh, I've worked at national progressive uh, firms that really focus on political strategy and issue area um, PR and design support for issues like sex education, abortion access, um, Black maternal mortality, and a variety of issues. And I was also uh, at a national organization that focused on reproductive health, where I led all of our crisis response when it comes to um, pregnancy outcomes, as well as uh, reproductive justice broadly. Um, this project honestly started out of nowhere. I was an intern at Truth Initiative in 2014, didn't really care about the issue, didn't think it was sexy, thought I had better things to, to worry about until I started reading research and, and looking at the work of people like you, of like Carol Magruder and Philip Gardner and Lorraine and the center and so many uh, of people who have come before me who really put us on notice around the intersectionality of this issue, around the importance and the critical nature of the issue. And ever since then, I was really all in. Um, so this started 10 years ago because I just started having questions around how did menthol become so synonymous with black culture. I'm curious, I'm a nosy person, and this all just started because I had questions selfishly that I wanted answers to. And then it eventually turned into a film that I welcomed everyone else to uh, join me on my journey of exploration. The films are really focused on young people around 13 to 24 years old, but I've been really surprised and impressed by how many different audiences have really um, felt impacted by the film and have used the film in various ways um, in their communities for policy and things like that. Um, I released the film in 2016, right when I graduated from school, I started like my quote unquote real career and this was just nights and weekends, um, but someone else had, different, <laughs> had, had a different story and um, I've been really fortunate to show the film in black churches and NAACP conferences and University of Michigan and Arkansas and Tennessee and Wisconsin and, and New York and board meetings and shareholder meetings and youth conferences and honestly, A through Z. And it's really, really um, been a rewarding experience to get to know people like you and your work and have it all come full circle, full circle because uh, Lorraine Lathan was actually the first person who ever invited me uh, to speak in 2016 on the film in Wisconsin. Um, and that really started a career and a platform that I've been able to really um, nurture and bring in more young people around. So um, I've, since the film was released in 2016, I've been really um, 
sort of um, privilege to be to have a platform in news media and state media and local media where I've been able to use the film to attract new audiences in the space. The whole reason I made this film is because I didn't feel like there was material for me. Maybe I, I wasn't aware of organizations like this, <laughs> but I wasn't, I didn't see sort of um, non-scare tactics, not boring videos and content for young people who didn't know that this was connected to their everyday lives, who thought this was a thing of the past. And so I really um, went forward and used my voice, used the film for policy discussions, for editorial meetings, for um, business decisions. And um, ever since sort of I've been talking about the film, it's been really focused on the past. As you know, many things have happened since then. And it just kept on sort of being a bug in my head that there was more to say. The first film doesn't include e-cigarettes whatsoever. It just focuses on the past. And so I just felt there was a lot more to be said. And I was fortunate to go back to Truth Initiative and propose a second film that is really focused on telling the true story of the origin of, the, of tobacco, as well as where the industry is going. And so that is the result, which we're about to watch. It's 13 minutes. Uh, and it's the second sort of um, second uh, tent pole in my series um, that could be more this year in the future. And um, I can't wait to share after some resources that accompany the film and some ways that you can use the film in commercials and news and broadcast and print and things like that in the future. Um, but for now, I'll stop talking and I'll present Black Lives, Black Lungs, uh, The Journey of a Stolen Leaf. And apologies to whoever's heard my voice 500 times by now, including me. <laughs> I've always been led by questions, but sometimes a simple question can lead to big answers. One question in particular has taken me on a nearly 10 year journey. How did menthol cigarettes become the black cigarette? My map of answers formed into a short film Black Lives, Black Lungs. What started as a question about one product turned into an exploration of how an entire industry in broad daylight and for decades without oversight wielded its immense power at the cost of black health. As I documented the past, I began to see movement in the present acknowledging the harms of big tobacco. Movement that I thought would right the wrongs of the past. It has been more than a decade since the US banned cigarettes with flavors that helped make them more appealing, especially to kids. But the most popular flavor got a special exemption, and that may be about to change. The FDA's expected plan to ban menthol in cigarettes would be a victory for advocates who note the tobacco industry has targeted the black community with menthols for decades. It's making menthols cheaper in black communities, more price discounts in black communities, uh, strategic partnerships with Black-led organizations, the Cool Jazz Festival, really a variety of ways to really focus on transforming menthol into a Black cigarette. I finally began to see the industry's power fade, or so I thought. In a blink of an eye, the industry had managed to regain its footing, attract new generations, and protect its future, all with a new product that served as a golden loophole. After decades of successful work by public health to make the harms of traditional tobacco known, a new fight had already begun. I started thinking about a whole new set of questions and found myself going back to the past for clues. Now, the puzzle is clear to me. I cannot tell the story of America's first great enterprise, Big Tobacco, without telling the story of colonization, slavery, and capitalism. of the actual tobacco plant are far removed from the commercialized chemical lace product we know today. Just as colonizers stole land and resources from indigenous people when they invaded and pillaged North America, they also stole a sacred plant, tobacco. Many indigenous people view tobacco as sacred. However, unsurprisingly, 
Indigenous people soon began to see the industry appropriate their culture when it became convenient to their bottom line. To distract from the additives and chemicals they use to make their products more addictive, decades of industry marketing has attempted to frame their products as natural, fresh, and organic, using caricature and appropriation to do so. When we colonized um, the, the states and we took commercial tobacco away from indigenous populations, mm -hmm. we decided that we wanted to, to kidnap and abduct um, black families from from various parts of Africa to come and to grow it and to harvest it and to manufacture it and to eventually um, use it. The punchline here is the United States was founded on the genocide of the American Indian people and the enslavement of Africans. And that enslavement was based on the tobacco um, franchise which became a worldwide franchise. So. Some people would say that tobacco and racism is baked into the DNA of the United States. As I was conducting research for this film, I came across Dr. Damaris B. Hill's words in Ibram Kendi's 400 Souls. 1634 through 1639. Tobacco, Damaris B. Hill. The Indians tell the Africans that the English have proven to be liars since the first lot and that the latest lie is only the Africans can keep the Spanish tobacco alive. The lie is that the Africans are the only ones who can cut the tobacco at the base and survive the stalk. Flavors are at the center of Big Tobacco's playbook. Menthol is a flavor. The chemical compound masks the harshness of tobacco and, as the CDC warns, makes it harder to quit. A 2009 law outlined all flavors in cigarettes, except menthol. Menthol disproportionately impacts black people, and only a successful 50-plus year campaign has transformed the flavor into an untouchable beast. In both cigarettes, and e-cigarettes. Well, let's be clear, it was a nicotine delivery device and nicotine is one of the most addictive products that we know and it's being pushed even though initially by small groups of people we saw that the tobacco industry was getting involved so it became clear pretty early on that what we were dealing with was the second movement, you know, cigarettes being the first movement, e-cigarettes now being the second movement of the tobacco industry. Tobacco companies advertise cigarettes as being fresh, cool, and a sign of independence and freedom. Doctors were even used to advertise cigarettes, going as far as claiming that menthol cigarettes helped asthma. Now, the introduction of e-cigarettes followed a similar path. E-cigarettes were marketed as modern, sleek, and innovative way to consume nicotine. In 1994, Seven tobacco industry executives were called before Congress to answer questions under oath. I don't believe that nicotine or our products are addictive. 25 years later, the co-founder of Juul was also called in front of Congress to testify about Juul's products under oath. Put simply, Juul Labs isn't big tobacco. We are here to eliminate its product, the cigarette. However, seven months before this hearing, Altria, maker of Marlboro and largest tobacco company, purchased a $12.8 billion stake in Juul. Moving from smoking to potentially less harmful choices. And from being known as a tobacco company to being recognized as a tobacco harm reduction company. I've been aware of e-cigarettes as a potential harm reduction approach. But when the e-cigarettes started to be flavored, I knew that they were probably moving away from cigarettes and even menthol cigarettes and moving towards another product. With the explosion of e-cigarettes on the U.S. market, the industry began rebranding in an attempt to profit not only from traditional cigarettes, but also from the proposed solution, e-cigarettes. That's where the industry's focus is. 
the future. It was very frustrating seeing the rollout of the e-cigarettes and I really blame the FDA because they were asleep at the switch and let these products just proliferate all over our country. I think somewhere in my sophomore and junior year I remember um, I would be walking on campus and I would just smell like cotton candy or I would smell like something like fruity. It hit me like later, I'm like that's like an e-cigarette, like the smell of like the flavors. I used to, in my lecture, say, you know, if cigarettes were created today, they would never be allowed to be on the market. And then the e-cigarette industry came along and they made a liar of me. And the mods and, and the, the tank devices, I, I knew that there would be a problem, but I was thinking, yeah, not so much, because it, there's so much work in using that. So only a specific population is going to use that regularly, until Juul came out, quite honestly. Teachers wanted us to come out and really talk about and educate their students and some of their school leaders around, you know, this thing called Juul, right? It, it really kind of overtook the market. I saw the packaging and immediately I was like, this is for kids. Yeah. They can say it's not, but yes. they, it is. This looks like an Apple product. Yes. It's very sleek. If you can have access to nicotine 24 seven and it does not irritate your throat, people cannot smell it, you have no incentive not to use it, and it looks like it's for kids, we have a huge problem on our hands. The way in which e-cigarette companies like Juul wield their money to buy influence and protect their reputation is lifted straight out of the big tobacco playbook. I think what has happened, particularly in the last eight years or so, has been the rise of the tobacco industry funding black mouthpieces to speak for them and put out lies about this. Now, e-cigarette companies are dusting off this very same charm offensive to protect their products. In 2019, Juul went on a black hiring spree at the same time as federal officials and public health experts were warning that their products targeted young people. First, the company secured a former head of the NAACP, then a board member of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, and finally, a top Obama civil rights liaison. Shortly after this hiring spree, the New York Times reported that Jewel was providing $7.5 million to Meharry Medical College. Meharry Medical College is a unique institution. It is one of four black medical colleges in the country. It is significant in its contributions to producing black doctors, black veterinarians, dentists uh, in this country, as well as public health professionals. This particular donation is in direct conflict with the mission of the institution. And while I'm frustrated by that because we've been doing a lot of work to talk about the impact of Juul, how they were targeting young people through their ads, how they are, you know, promoting their flavor products. The institution is a tobacco-free campus, uh, and so this policy means that you're not going to take funds from these institutions. But also your mission is to focus on addressing health disparities, and this taking this donation is in direct correlation of perpetuating those disparities. Jewel aligning itself with one of the country's only black medical schools is a clear attempt to improve the industry's reputation and by protection. It's true. Harm reduction is a proven public health strategy focused on providing evidence-based, lower harm alternatives for those who don't quit harmful substances. But in recent years, the tobacco industry has co-opted the term as a way to introduce new nicotine products to attract new users. While e-cigarettes and other non-combustible nicotine products may help adults who are trying to quit smoking, for young people who have never smoked, they are just another pathway to a potential lifetime of nicotine addiction. Big Tobacco is attempting to profit off of the problem they created by positioning themselves as a solution. I never saw e-cigarettes as the savior for smokers. I, and, and, and we need to quit. We don't need to switch. We're not trying to uh, take our people and make them lifelong customers of Juul. Here's a harm reduction approach right now. Let's reduce the amount of marketing that are in black and brown neighborhoods. Why don't we try that? Let's try to restrict sales. Let's try. So there are a whole lot of things that we can do in terms of harm reduction. We don't need to peddle more drug devices. The first great American enterprise, Big Tobacco, has been alive and well ever since the first tobacco seeds were planted in Virginia in 1610. Now they have new and sleek products, but the industry is never far from its origin. 
by expanding product portfolios, attracting younger customers with e-cigarettes, and spending billions to improve industry reputation, Big Tobacco is attempting to distract the public and regulators from its true origins and goals. But we will not let them get away with it. Our collective power is growing. Our people are not new to holding industries accountable. Understanding origins is our path to be stewards for our communities. On watch so history doesn't have to repeat itself. That was Black Lives, Black Lungs. And before we hop into the q and I just wanted to share with you um, the zine, the interactive zine that I made in partnership with Black Women's Health Imperative and a cohort of HBCU students. The zine is interactive. It's built for college students. It has discussion guides and basically both films in written form with a timeline, with facts and stats. Um, but the reason I love it is because it shows how um, people have used the film previously. Uh, cohort members interviewed people like the Virginia Department of Health who used Black Lives, Black Lungs on statewide bus ads. They interviewed um, a teen group in Minnesota who used it for uh, youth participation and the Youth Leadership Institute and just a variety of ways that people have used the film and strategies they've used to take action. And then it gives the um, calls to action of how uh, People reading the zine can take action, as well as quotes from icons like Lorraine Lathan on how they use the film in addition to the discussion guide. Um, so I will stop sharing and hand it over to the team to get us started in Q&A. Mm. Wow, thank you, Lincoln. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes and we've got a couple of questions in the Q&A. Uh, let me answer a couple of, we are recording this and the video will be shared. Um, oh, Lorraine put in the chat where you can actually download uh, the materials from their website. And also you can download the material from nomethalsunday.org, our website. Uh, and all of the information is free. You can share them. If you find yourself needing to print out or develop and make your own fans. We have material that you can, we'll share the, the screens with you so that you can actually print them out um, as well. April Anderson, you saw, you heard the videos, uh, oh, excuse me, audio from us. And it was, uh, had Black Health Now, and which is a national syndicated radio uh, program, but you can actually tag them for yourself. Uh, once you download them. So that's available. So does anyone have any uh, Lincoln so happy? Congratulations, Lincoln. So happy to have you and everything you plan, the second film. Um, just looking here. Were there any? Oh, Lincoln, we have one. Uh, I plan to have a viewing gathering on May 13th as a kickoff for the Mental Sunday partners and youth groups. Uh, we'll, we'll be invited to attend. I'm not sure if that was a question. Or, yeah, so Pamela Clark, if you have, if that's a question that you want to ask Lincoln about his availability or utilizing the film, I think you can download the film at uh, Lincoln. You want to, can you put your, yes. Um, yes. your website in, in the chat? Also, if you go to nomenthalsunday.com, download the toolkit. The link is already in, already there. For you to download so uh, that just a number of ways in which you can actually utilize these materials um meaning i get think we got a one question they want to utilize uh willie menthol you know now mike menthol was buried because we had a, had a funeral for him willie menthol his cousin is out <laughs> doing his thing now so uh yeah that i think Minua said that she would make that available to folks. Can uh, she tell, sorry, Greg, can she tell us how long it is? What's the length of the full length of it? 
the full length of the, the video? The full length video. Yeah. How long? Do you want to answer that? Yes, it's 17 minutes long. Okay, thanks. I just have one quick question for Lincoln. I was wondering, the, your guide, I love your guide, and I'm just wondering, is the Black Women's Imperative, do you know whether or not they're participating in No Menthol Sunday? I do not know. I was um, I was working with them as part of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation uh, grantee process on the zine. I know they're doing um, more additional trainings for their college chapters, but I'm actually not aware if they're participating in No Menthol Sunday, but they should. They should. <laughs> My contact address if you need that. Oh, I would love it. Love to have that. Thank you. Yeah. Are there anyone others who, that may have a question? Oh, uh, okay. Oh, Glenda, she's she's on the on the line. They're sh they're showcasing the film, the evening in Atlanta at uh, Clark Atlanta University students, and we're having to save the girls, save the world, chat and chew. So it's getting. It's getting around. It's an excellent film. Definitely, definitely. So. Um, can I ask another question? I'm so, yes, so ma'am. have a little time. This is for Carol. I missed a little bit. You were talking about you went to London. You wanted to speak at the board meeting. Can you just just real do a quick recap of that? I'm sorry. Sure. So for years, I have one share of all the tobacco companies, and so we have. I have one for British American Tobacco. British American Tobacco wholly owns Reynolds American, which is Newport Cigarettes. And I would, before I, all this took over my life, I would go to the shareholders meetings every year and, you know, be a little disruptor, ask a question, say something, um, you know, in their face. So we went over to London and uh, so it was five of us. Manu Jones was one of our delegation. We all had our shares and we went to check out the hotel the day before the meeting. So they saw us and they knew we were coming. Wow. Uh, we were able to get some interviews. And so when we got there, they had a special uh, security man to come out to deal with the sisters. Mm. Um, and they told us we couldn't get in because the, stock, the way that it's a, it's a British company and the way the stock is held is held through an intermediary, which is, for my case, was Citibank. And on their instructions, which I had printed out, we had all the proof of our, that we were on, on the one share of these stocks. They had given the incorrect information and actually hadn't updated it from last year from because this was the first time in several years since they had it in person because of COVID. So they bought us some tea in the lounge and watched us. Um, and we were able to sit there. We had already printed up our little um, signs of protest. So when it was over, and there were only about 50 people there, I thought it would be bigger than that. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to hold our hold up, hold up our signs. They asked us to go outside on the sidewalk, and we did that. Um, so it was very worthwhile. Uh, we are the exploratory group, so we will be. Um, so it's usually the fourth week in April, but this year was the third, I think, because of the coronation for Prince Charles. Um, so we will keep people advised, and if people want to join us, it will be wonderful. Um, so you need one stock, and I will give. I will be in touch with. Um, city group to see what, so we'll give guidance to everybody. They'll give the correct information. But if people want to join us, um, we will have more information about that as we get into next year. Okay. And Manu went, so Manu could also uh, chime in if she has anything to add in. It was a, a learning experience <laughs> for um, us all. You know, being from Detroit, Detroit is a, a Black city well you are going over to london and you know it's it's different waters um I, i'm appreciative of the opportunity uh they were ready for us i mean they had the secret wow. service ear ear <laughs> ear pieces in and it was it was a tip, but we were prepared we knew that that might be the case and so you know we were able to get our petition um signs and um really get some attention uh called to the issue and so yeah i'm excited about us going back next year um with more people yes right. and it'd be great right. to have a delegation of clergy we have a little prayer meeting in front of the hotel before the <laughs> before the shareholders we'll you know yes. do it up in our way as african-american and black people mm -hmm. great yes thank you thank you both and just as an FYI, next month, uh, the week of No Menthol Sunday, a group of youth will be attending the Altria, uh board meeting 
Uh, and they've got uh, proxies for, I think, a couple, about five shares, and they're going to be the disruptors there, uh, along with some other training that we're going to be doing in, in Washington, D.C., uh, from the 16th through the 18th. Uh, with our youth, about 75 to 80 youth will be there, but about five to six of them will be attending the Altria um, board meeting. So, yes. uh, and we heard, we, you've heard a little bit about some of the other things that are happening with No Menthol Sunday. Next week on May the 3rd, we will be having our retailer engagement training. That's, uh, will be, you like Lorraine Latham and her group will be doing the training uh, next week. Uh, from three to four Eastern time. Uh, and uh, we'll put be putting the uh, the link in there where you can actually register for that. Also, May the 5th, uh, you heard about California. California is going to be doing their kickoff. That's uh, Carol Magruder and their group out in California. So if you can visit to register, visit normenthalsunday.org uh, and under events, and you can register there. And we may be able to put the registration link in, in the chat as well. So, so as a reminder, we want you to register your event for No Menthol Sunday. We want you to be able to be counted among the groups that are actively involved with No Menthol Sunday. We'd like for you to share this with your congregations, with your, your community leaders, with anyone who may want to participate in No Menthol Sunday. No Menthol Sunday is for everyone, every faith. So if you have the Muslim community, if you have the Jewish community, if all the faith communities are involved and encouraged to participate in No Menthol Sunday. And yes, I, we have heard, what about if they worship on the Sabbath? We just say make every, sun, every day Sunday for that week. All right. So I'd like to thank everyone for participating. We're right at our time. And but before we leave, I have one more quote. Black Health Now. With No Menthol Sunday approaching, it's important we discuss the harmful effects of using vapes, hookahs, and e cigarettes to consume tobacco products. Aside from the harms of the tobacco itself, pens and e cigs are also harmful due to the device design, as they contain metal that's heated and can release microparticles as you smoke. Hookah is also very unsanitary, despite the disposable tips. Why? As you breathe in the smoke, some germs and particles from your mouth and breath can still travel into the tubing from the mouthpiece. And as you pass that around, you spread your germs to others continuously. No Menthol Sunday is May 21st, so visit www.nomenthalsunday.org to learn about how you and your faith community can focus on the victory of being tobacco and nicotine free. Let me say thank you to everyone for participating. Uh, the audios will be available on our website. Go to our website, uh, nomenthalsunday.org, and we'll make them available for, to you. You can download them. You can utilize them in your community. Utilize them, share them with your radio stations, and uh, as well as the other materials that you can download. We encourage you to download the print materials to share on your social media platforms, utilizing the hashtag NMS2023 or the hashtag No Menthol Sunday. We'd like to capture all of this information in our, uh, on our power wall to share with the rest of the world. I thank you so very much for participating, and I look forward to seeing you next week when we do our retailer engagement. Yes, that's my phone. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.